India is very rich in its heritage. And scientists, archaeologists, historians, computer specialists have joined together to make a digital landscape of Hampi. I have with me Dr. Sharda Srinivasan. She is India's probably the only scientist who dances in the classical dance form. So here we have a scientist who dances and a 3D printed landscape of Hampi. Shada, what is this Indian digital heritage uh, uh, project and what is depicted here? Uh, thank you so much, Pallava. So it's quite exciting to be here with all these uh, models of these very spectacular monuments. Well, uh, digital visualization is important for certain reasons. If you consider the, what happens to monuments over the vicissitudes, vicissitudes of time, right here at Hampi you see how um, over time there are two kinds of deterioration. One is the natural deterioration and there's also man-made man degradation. Um, for instance, several of these monuments that you can see also had brick superstructures and a what, very... What do we see here? What is this? Is yes. this, is this uh, handmade? What is it? Well, you're looking at this uh, beautiful 3D printed model of 1 is to 14 scale of the chariot shrine to Garuda, which is in the Vitala temple complex in Hampi. Now we have some photographs by Alexander Greenlaw, which goes back to the mid 19th century, which showed that this had a brick superstructure on top, which in subsequent times it has collapsed. So what we can do with this kind of 3D visualization technology is that we can reconstruct what it would have looked like, you know, looking at the photographs and that was also so one of what the do you need to do for 3d visualization you you have let's say we are in humpy and we have this chariot in front of us so what is done before you get to a point where you get a 3d structure like this so in this case we are lucky that technology we have the technologies which come to our aid so laser scanning has been undertaken using this um, laser scanner which uh, uh, you know was a project it was done based at the uh, Karnataka Council for Science and Technology. And the entire uh, uh, monument has been laser scanned and a 3D point cloud has been created. Mm -hmm. And from the 3D point cloud, you're able to print it here, as I said, 1 is to 14, and you get such extraordinary detail. That is one aspect. Of course, then the other aspect of visualization of, uh, you know, the missing parts, which was maybe done looking at photographs, and that Meaning has been you can done fill in the gaps. Meaning, if there is a structure here, let, let's let's look at this closely. Yeah. So these, we can see fine detail here, which if you were normally standing, one would not be able to see. Yes, in the sense that, um, you know, when you look at this here, now you're able to even pick up the fact that there is an image of Vitala here, which this shrine is actually dedicated to too. He's a pastoral form of Vishnu. And you can see how finely he's shown here, you know, with his uh, fists on his... Yeah. Um, thighs posing like that and that's not very easy to catch when you're actually looking these days at the, at the at the shrine as well as the garuda right inside so so many of these extraordinarily fine details actually come up to you so much more clearly with this 3d printing which has been done you know using a poly lactose material and you can also recreate the missing parts through peak photo earlier photographs or through what existed through architects who have written in that time Yes, that is a more challenging task, but it can be done, and that is what has been attempted. For example, this is the uh, the main what is, part. What is this we are seeing? Yes, this is a 3D printed model of the main Vijaya Vitala temple, which is attributed to the period of Devaraya in the mid uh, 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 mid earlier part of the 15th century, and this shrine actually had these. Uh, um, it, it had a brick superstructure on top, which okay. is now missing. Which was on top of this, which is yes, missing. Yes, yes. And an attempt has been made to reconstruct the shape of that brick superstructure. Meaning that what we see at the yes. end is yes. a reconstruction. Exactly. Not just what is 3D printed no. here, no. but actually a reconstruction made on what it could have been at that point. Yes. So for that, what one has used is these AutoCAD 
along with Google SketchUp and Kinect-based modeling and things like that, where they've tried to simulate what it might have looked like by looking at other kinds of superstructures, such as you know what we found in the green law pictures for the, the Ratha, and also through discussions with Stapatis, the existing Stapatis, such as at Mahablipuram, and uh, you know, looking at how they would go about modeling a superstructure of that. So it is still a conjectural reconstruction, but it's nice that you know we have these ways of visualization, which helps students, which helps you know, uh, connoisseurs and such like. And now, so, see, the yeah. Hampi temples are very famous for those. Musical, musical pillars. pillars. Exactly. Yes. So this is this a reconstruction in 3D of yes. the somewhat this of is, the musical pillars? Yes, this is as you enter the Vijayavitala shrine, you have this very spectacular group of pillars which are described as the Saptaswara pillars. Because this set of four colonnades, when you try to play them, it actually approximates to the Sarigama sound. And that has been quite almost exactly 3D printed over here. But but you can't get the sound. You, well, we have tried to do that with uh, the other that, installation that, there, which, uh, you know, you tap the pillar and then it tries to recreate the sound. But there was also one of the projects that we did, which did try to do a haptic uh, reconstruction of the sound, where you can actually also get the, the sound cloud mm -hmm. and then try and model it. When you press a button, then you hear that sound and things like so, that. So how does this help an average Indian? Yeah. Well, you know, I think the main uh, thing is that the most interesting aspect and the most exciting outcome is the enthusiasm that this has generated, let's say, amongst the younger generation and amongst students who, at the end of the day, we all like to see, you know, it takes us back to our childhood, seeing models and, you know, things that of a scalable size. So I think it's great for, as an educational exercise. And I think there's also a lot of value for academics. You know, when we think of the Rani Ki Vav, for instance, many of us who are physically challenged are not going to be able to go down to that depth and actually see it. But to have all those details there in 3D printing. And the other um, advantage also, for instance, the studies that I was doing for looking at iconometry, which is to look at the actual measurement systems and how did they achieve such pre precision structures. So for that, now we have the 3D point cloud and we can quite precisely see, for instance, what was the iconometric proportion used for modeling, for example, in this case, the colossal Lakshmi Narasimha, and how, you know, that, uh, you know, for instance, these pillars and the Peters and also we have all of that. So tomorrow, just say, for instance, as a meteorite, you know, anything can happen, you know, and we're looking at earthquake. Time, earthquake, a meteorite could just come and land on this and destroy all this. So at least we have the 3D model and like, you know, if something like the Bamiyan Buddha or any other destroyed structure, whether it's, you know, um, the, the Babri Masjid or whatever, if you had had the point clouds and at least we can reconstruct and keep it. So these are the advantages. And also, for instance, if you look at, um, you know, some of the further work on all of this, because as I was saying, there are two types of uh, degradation. One was the, the natural, and then there's also man-made. During the sack of the Talikota, a lot of the monuments were hacked down. There are missing parts of the, mm -hmm. the trunks of the elephants and, you know, the balustrade over there and so on. So there's also been uh, some attempt to try and kind of actually um, but that is still, uh, you know, an area of where there's a lot more research that needs to be done. To, because what they, they try to do, there's a technology called in-painting, which you mm -hmm. can do, for instance, to repair murals. But the 3D in-painting is a little more challenging, and that's at an inception stage. And that was one of the projects, for instance, with IIT Madras, where they try to do, uh, take the 2D in-painting into 3D. So there are so many of these technical challenges which have been addressed through this project and there's a lot of synergy and excitement there to take it to the next where, level. Where can, we, where can this go further? See, India is so rich in heritage yes. and we are considered a digital powerhouse. Yes. Where can this whole project lead us to? Look at the beauty of this. Look at this. Yeah. How, much, how much more can we create and do? How, how, much, how can we make it even better? Yeah, well, I mean... Uh, I think that uh, the future holds enormous possibilities and I think it would also be good in terms of uh, the future of teaching sculptors, you know, in, in the next generation and, uh, you know, modeling our own architecture based on styles like this, you know, why can't we also dream of bringing back those traditional st styles? So from that digital point cloud, perhaps a modern architect could manipulate it a bit more and, okay, now, for instance, we have 
some hotels which might be modeled on the Lotus Mahal or whatever, but you know, a lot more of our architecture could take some of these elements and incorporate them. And perhaps even the printing, like maybe the stone, of course, we have thinking of the future, of course, we hope for the very best with the sculptors themselves that the, you know, the stone, stone sculpting tradition can go on. But who knows if we get materials which are durable, we just get a 3D printer, a printed form of it. Maybe it's inexpensive also. And you know, why not? Everybody can afford to have those elements and things like that. I mean, I would love to, if I could buy one, I would love to have a model of something like this in my house. So even as, as curios and things like that, collectibles, sure. I think that's a, there's, a, there's a lot of future. For you, you are a rare scientist who, who knows so much about art and culture and history. How did you get involved in these two widely different subjects and you've done so well and you also uh, do classical dancing? And I've seen photographs of you uh, in these various humpy monuments performing. How did you get the inspiration and how did it all come through? Well, thank you for mentioning that. It's, uh, you know, a topic close to my heart. And when I'm here, I'm also recollecting the inspiration that I also got from the Humpy Monuments to actually get back more into dance, as even as a scientist, because it was the idea of the, the, the sounds, the musical pillars, which we then studied. And, and I found that it has a lot of orthoclase content in it, which, you know, because of the crystal structure, the monoclinic crystal structure of orthoclase it actually contributes to the tonality and so on so there are it's 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 like i think it's a continuum it's like the art led me to the science and the science led me back to the art because when you see the perfection in that microstructure for instance that's the same kind of perfection that you visualize as an artist and you know and uh, so for me because i was a bharatanatyam dancer i think uh, you know, sometimes some of our classical arts themselves are so well integrated in the way the, the technical aspects and the, the aesthetic aspects combine, the left brain activities and the right brain <laughs> activities sort of come true, together. True. So that itself keeps you, you know, flowing in that direction. And as I say, I'm, I'm very grateful for the, uh, you know, the insights that I had as a scientist into all of this because it just takes it to the next level. Yes, you appreciate the art and the aesthetics, but when you understand the science, for instance, you know, with, with the study of the pillar on the fact that there was a bit of coupling of the vibration in those pillars, you know, moving towards uh, a genuine lithophone structure and things like that, so that it, it wasn't just perhaps totally accidental. There had to have been some, you know, experimenting with that material, which is very resonant, but also realizing that when you have them like this as colonnades, it does create this lithophone effect and the coupling and things like that. So the it, it takes you back into, it's also, there's a, so much of, a uh, fascinating insight into human cognition and how all of these, you know, processes come together. So I, I don't see it as a disconnect that way in terms of science and no. art and so on. See, when I'm standing here, I, remind, I get reminded of that book which says, The Wonder That Was India. And, and, and here we are trying to recreate that wonder that was India with the rich heritage and matching it with the newfound Indian skills of digital and mapping it with 3D printing, the entire structure you see behind us is mostly 3D printed. So high amalgamation of art and modern science. And that is what Indian Digital Heritage Project is all about. I think in future, surprised. it should be, it, in future, this whole thing should be mind blowing. And towards that, we need to work a little harder. At the National Museum, which houses some 5,000-year-old artifacts, to this location, where you have 21st century 3D printed humpy architecture. And a great tribute also to our continuing traditions of stone masonry and metal working and we also need to make sure that they are not left left behind in this digital world that their handcrafting which has lasted so many generations is also taken further and given a new lease of life so thank certainly, you so much certainly certainly a delight to be here and certainly a delight to see this whole modern and traditional marriage of technology in new delhi palav bagla <laughs>